welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques and today we're going to talk about how to dart a bust of a wedding gown. Now a lot of brides are going to panic when you mention needing to dart the bust, but this is where we put the dart typically. Um, they usually picture the very pointy bust of like the 1950s or something like that. Um, this is how you know that you need to dart it. The back of the dress is flush, the sides fit right, but the front is just standing out a little funny and you need to angle that bust back to make it flush to her chest. Alright, so let's get started. I'm going to open up the area that we're going to work. And by the way guys, this video has two parts. I'm going to show you first how to dart the bust. And then the second half of it, I'm going to show you another technique for um, a really common mild deformity that we see um, where their chest is kind of sunken in, the sternum is kind of pushed in a little bit, and you just can't get that inner angle of the sweetheart to lay flush or bust. Um, there's a special alteration for that, and so that's included in this video. I cannot wait to share that with you guys because I know that can be a very frustrating fitting situation for you and the bride. So there's a little row of beads along the top of this dress, and I'm just kind of breaking the threads here, picking the beads off, and I'm going to lay them to the side because we need to put them back when we're done. All right, so I've got it open there at the top, and I'm going to do that to both sides. I'm going to flip it inside out so that I can work between the layers. Um, now this dress has uh, the shell layer, that's the main fabric. It's got the lace overlay. And then on the inside it has a thin lining fabric with a little bit of a light cotton inner lining. So it's really four layers. Um, two layers stacked on each side though. So this is the lining layer and you can see where the boning is running up through where I need to put the dart. That's a very common place for boning to occur. It is between the two lining layers. The regular lining that's going to be touching the bride's skin and then that cotton inner lining. So I've got to get between those layers and shorten that boning a little bit. Uh, for two reasons. One is so that I can put the dart in, but the other reason is after I dart it, the top of that boning is not going to be at the right angle anymore and it's going to be a little too long. So I'm going to set it free. I'm just breaking the threads on this uh, inner lining layer. And then I'm going to separate it from the inner lining and shorten it. So I'm going to break the threads to be able to get in between the two layers here. There we go. That's our little hidey hole. We can go down and find the tip of that boning. I'm just going to tunnel my finger down in there and I'm separating the boning with my finger there. Don't you love this new camera? <laughs> um, if you guys follow me, um, remember I got the Canon M50, the mirrorless, for, um, for recording and it just zooms in on those details so much more crisply than before. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. The footage is just so much better. So there we go, we shortened it. And if you don't regularly follow, follow me, go ahead and consider that. Just hit subscribe or hit the little bell beside the subscribe button after you've hit subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And um, I can help you on your journey to sewing bridal. So what I did was I shortened the boning, I heat sealed the boning, and now I'm stitching a little muslin stopper to the top. All that is is muslin fabric that's been cut in a one by one inch square. And I just capped it with that and that keeps the little stays from coming out and poking her. Alright, so now this is much more workable for us. 
The angle of the dart on the lining layer is not nearly as important as the angle of the dart on your outer layer. So you, you're gonna see this dart that I put in was really short and quick. What matters is the, um, the size of the dart right at the edge of the fabric has to be the same as your outer layer, but the angle of it, the length of it, none of that has to be the same. You just need the edge of it to be pinched up the right amount. Okay, so now I'm pinching, this is the outer layer. This is the shell plus the lace overlay. And I've pinched it the same amount at the edge. And now I'm going to taper it out. As you sew toward the end of the dart, you really want to be curving it and just kind of run off the edge of the earth there. You do not want to stop abruptly. Um, you don't want it to be a perfect angle where it stops it needs to have a little bit of a curve and that's what's going to make the natural bust curve now you can see what I'm talking about the pinch is the same size for the lining in the outer layer and then I'm going to sew this back together up at the top remember if you miss anything just hit pause and go back and watch it again if you've never seen this done you might have to watch it a few times so um, what I was saying is the angle of that bust start um, is very important for getting a natural curve in the cup. The other important thing is the ironing, and you'll see that toward the end of the video. But here I've got it, and you can see it curves nicely. It is not pointing toward the apex of the bust. It, it doesn't end abruptly or sharply. It's not calling attention to anything. Now I need to stitch the row of beads at the top all right so now I'm on the inside and I have to duplicate what I did on the left side I've got to do it on the right side this will be the trickiest part of the alteration you're gonna to want to measure it the distance from several landmarks within the dress okay so at the top you know move down an inch or two measure again and just make sure you're putting the dart the exact same way on one side as the other now there is an exception to this sometimes um, a bride is shaped quite differently on one side than the other and you can't even it out with padding and you need to go ahead and make the dart a little bit different um, what you're gonna do then is you're gonna just eyeball it get her in the dress and make sure that to the viewer um, everything looks even so sometimes our sewing is not even, but the end result looks more even, if that makes sense. Now here I've sped this up, because um, I'm sure you know how to sew on a row of seed beads, uh, but that's all I'm doing is I'm beading the edge here. And I'm using the Hypo Cement to finish off my knot. All right, and this next section is gonna be dealing with what they call pectus excavatum, or funnel chest. Um, or you can even just say, you know, someone whose sternum is kind of pushed in a little bit or a curved uh, concave chest. You'll hear different things. But basically what happens is the sternum is pushed in a little deeper than normal. Um, so this bodice here is laying flush. This is after it's been fixed. But I just kind of sketched on the picture so you can tell. This is where we're going to do our work. Those little stitch lines I've sketched on this picture. Uh, we need to gather this in. Sometimes I've seen such extreme cases that I've actually had to dart that part of the sweetheart. That's very rare. Usually a gathering is going to work. But you can see by this picture how much the sternum caves in. And you really need to try to maintain some sense of modesty by making the dress flush to the bride. So I'm going to show you this fix with using just gathering going from the top of the sweetheart down to the, the center of the sweetheart. So you're gonna pick um, a nice thick thread. I used upholstery thread. Now this is how much of a pinch it took on her body to get this to lay flush to her, is what I'm demonstrating here. Um, so I'm gonna take upholstery thread, doubled, it's ivory, a nice big strong knot, okay? I've gotta anchor that knot in there. And then when we do our gathering stitches, they're going to be um, very, very even. That's going to be really important, okay? So we're looking at 
every eighth of an inch or every quarter of an inch, uh, we're gonna be kind of coming in and out just so that the stitch length is very, very even because it's going to create a gather. And if one of your stitches is longer than the other, you're gonna have a pucker that's standing out. Now this is kind of a little trickier if you don't have lace overlay to camouflage your work. So this dress is really ideal to do this on. Um, if you had, say, just a flat satin gown, you're really going to be limited as far as how much gathering you can do. So here I've done several knots in one place just to anchor that and get going. And now I'm just going to tunnel this stitch through. I'm going to do it all the way up at the very edge. See how I brought the thread out at the very, very edge. We don't want to gather lower down. We want it to be the very edge so that it will curve in toward her body when you pull on it. So I'm just going to do a general running stitch. Just go right on down that line. And sometimes I do this uh, with the bride in the dress also. Um, if you really need to be able to adjust it on her, you can put these stitches in and have your thread and needle hanging on her dress, get her in her dress carefully, and then give it a tug, and when it fits right, knot it off then. All right, so I'm going to show you what happens when you pull on it and see how it just draws it up nicely. And it's really changing the curve of that bus. It's quite dramatic. So here's slow-mo and freeze frame. So obviously I'm pulling this in way further than what she needs, but I wanted to do this to the extreme so that you can see exactly the mechanics of this and how it works. So that's a little more where it needs to be for her, but it's really cupping back now. So I'm going to knot that thread, and again, you really have to make sure these knots are secure. So you're going to knot them several times, use the hypo cement so that you know it won't come undone. If this pops loose, the top of her bodice is not going to fit on the wedding day. It's going to be gaping, and it's going to be a very obvious problem. So obviously you're going to have to do the same thing to the same side, to the other side, and you're going to have to do it to the same exact degree. You don't want one side gathering more than the other. I'm knotting my threads with the hypo cement. And don't forget, there's links on my website. I have a products page on my website where you can purchase all these supplies that I use. And if ever you want to shadow me, um, I do offer retreats where you can come and stay for a week or two or a day, whatever. We have different packages. So here is one of the most important steps, steaming and pressing. So I've steamed the fabric in general just to supple it up first. And I am sorry this is out of frame, but you can still tell what I'm doing. I'm using the Taylor's ham and I'm pressing the tip of that dart so that it will be curved nicely. And I'm going to do that all along. I'm going to press in those gathers. They're going to look super nice. Using a lot of pressure and steam here. You have to be careful not to use too much heat when you have the sequins on the gown. But pressure and lots of steam will work beautifully and you can see that gather in this shot it's not too much it looks just right all right and one last 
point to note, you can see the dart here. You can see everything's laying flush. If you really wanted to take this up a level, I would say take some lace overlay and stitch it over that dart so that the dart is completely invisible. That is going to be a budget question for your bride, and it's going to matter if she doesn't care and she doesn't want to spend any more money on it. You can leave it like this. It's aisle ready. Um, but if she wants to take it up a notch, that's how I would do it. I hope this has helped you. Please hit like, share, and subscribe. Please mention my channel wherever you are in social media and on the interwebs. Help spread the word. We are sharing the journey to bridal sewing.